In percussing the chest, start by percussing the clavicles. Uh, next, you, you place your hand comfortably on the chest wall. You're going to strike the center of the middle phalanx here. Try and get it into a rib space. And it's a relaxed wrist movement. And you just two beats to each side. Comparing side to side, moving down laterally to the nipples and percussing into the axilla. On the left hand side, you pick up the gastric air bubble, and on the right hand side, you pick up hepatic dullness. The important thing about the percussion movement is that it's a nice relaxed movement from the wrist, not too rigid, and don't have to beat very hard in fact. Just a nice relaxed movement. So that's percussion. Whilst I've got my hands free, I like to look for tactile vocal fremitus. I examine for this by placing the heels of both hands on either side of the chest and asking the patient to say 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. It's equally acceptable to compare with one hand, 99. side to side, 99. or using the flat of the hand. 99. Although I think this has the disadvantage 99. of covering rather a large area. When it comes to auscultation, I prefer to use the diaphragm. Some physicians prefer to use the bell, but I think that you can hear the finer crackles uh, better with the diaphragm. The only circumstance that I would use the bell was if I was dealing with a patient with a lot of body hair. When you're auscultating, it's very important to get the patient to take the sort of breath uh, that you want. So demonstrate first. Big breath in and out through your mouth, like this. Okay, breathe away. And I'm moving side to side, comparing side to side. And I'm moving with end expiration. I'm not forgetting to listen in the axilla. And now we can turn to the back. When examining the back, it's important to get the patient in the right position. Okay, can you sit up for me, Trevor? It's not possible to examine the back like so. You really have to move the patient down the bed. Can you slide down for me? And then get in, preferably sitting down, behind the patient like so, into a comfortable position. And the routine on the back is very similar to that on the front. First of all, we're looking just on inspection here, whether there uh, is a kyphoscoliosis. Next, we want to look at expansion. So we place the fingers firmly again around the lateral ribs, just laying the thumbs on gently on the surface like this, and a big breath for me. And in fact, the expansion you measure at the back is less than that you see anteriorly and away. That's, and breathe, breathe away now, that's fine. 